I don't know. I want to know your ideas and why. Do you think it'd be any good? Is it worthwhile? So are you game? What do you reckon? Dear David, I had plans to have an elaborate skit in response to your video where I would write a letter on comically small paper sitting on a comically small cat couch, but... But I have better things to do, like work on this project. Since I've already wasted a bunch of time at being terrible at responding on Discord, I figured we might as well just jump right into this. So first of all, yes, of course, let's work together on this project. I think it'll be awesome. The metronome is the most hated and beloved tool in a musician's arsenal. Drummers swear at them, uh, guitarists ignore them, and pianists worship them. BPM can also get kind of complicated pretty quickly from a music theory perspective. I'm assuming that we're going for the beat is the chord note, uh, and living in a 4-4 four, four time signature construct. Uh, once you start getting into the eighth note having the beat, or a dotted eighth having a beat, and compound time, oh man, does it get crazy. So the peanut butter and jelly quarter note, I'm assuming that's, that's where we're living, that's where we're hanging out. Uh, and, and I think, really, what's gonna bring this project along and hold it up and keep it warm at night is gonna be the code. Uh, and it's going to require math. Now, I'm not great at math. They always say, the music teaches you math. If, if you're a musician, you're great at math. That's, you know, steam. Ah, it's all a lie. <laughs> uh, I, no, I'm, no. For me, and I think a lot of musicians, uh, tempo and rhythm and stuff like that, it's about feel. Uh, you sense it, um, you know. So to tell me that I need to apply a, a number or a count to what I'm doing that isn't just, uh, you know, shown on the display after I tap it in or after I record it and things and the computer tells me, that, that's tricky for me. So to basically be telling the computer, in this case a microcontroller, how to do the thing that I'm used to someone else telling me, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. So, as I always do in times of struggle, I, I turned to the internet and did some research into how you can successfully and accurately, mathematically, figure out your BPM, or beats per minute, uh, with tap tempo. Uh, and I think I have a pretty solid equation uh, that I've also tested, and I'm, I'm going to demonstrate to show you uh, how we can figure it out, uh, and how we can then put that into the code so that we can uh, kind of get an accurate BPM for a metronome out every time. Okay, so to demonstrate uh, the tap tempo uh, kind of equation stuff, I figured we'd start with a real world tap tempo here. Tap tempo is pretty common in most DAWs or digital audio workstations. I really like Reason's implementation because you can just tap here and just brings in your tempo and everything's good. Now they also exist in uh, browsers too. There's a lot of browser based ones, but I figured reasons would probably be the most accurate and I want to test against something kind of accurate, you know, just to make sure it's working as expected. Now BPM is of course beats per minute, which means we're basically dividing time, which is a man-made construct, uh, into another man-made construct of beats of tempo. Now the idea here is that I'm going to tap into reason the rhythm and while I'm doing that I'm also going to time it on my phone with the stopwatch and assuming 4-4 four, four time, uh, 4 beats per measure on the quarter note, uh, I'll start a new lap with the stopwatch every downbeat for a new measure. So that means basically I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, so that each lap is basically one measure or four beats and that will just um, help us out with figuring out the equation uh, so let's do that right now let me open up the stopwatch so let's tap so I just did that for 20 beats or five measures I stopped everything on the 21st 
Um, because of the delays, reaction times, also because, like, I'm not a computer, uh, there are some variations in the lap durations. You know, we've got, uh, the first one was 2 seconds, 58 milliseconds, uh, lap 2 was 2.47, lap 3, 2.45, lap 4, 2.37, lap 5, 2.45. So, like, it's all around the same ballpark, but there's some variation, um, because, uh, but that's okay, because what Tap Tempo does with, um, these, like, computerized things is it's taking our mediocre human metronome and making it better with a computerized, accurate metronome. And that's exactly what Reason was doing when we were tapping in. It says we have 99 BPM, it's averaging it, uh, and now we're gonna take our equation and make sure that we can also, uh, average it and make it all, all good. So to figure out BPM, uh, we're going to use a formula that takes in two equations. Uh, the first equation is going to look at how long we were counting beats. And in our case, that was 12.32 seconds. And we're going to divide the number of beats, which in this case was 20, by that length of time. So 20 divided by 12.32, that equals this. Uh, long repeating number that's okay uh we're gonna just keep it in like that so basically you gotta think of this as kind of this time interval that means that every let's call it 1.62 seconds there was a beat happening uh during that length of time that we looked at so there's a beat 1.62 seconds would pass there'd be another beat so on and so forth so this is kind of the average interval and that's the kind of number that um, would be clocked in a DAW, or in this case, our code. Uh, so that's our first equation. The second equation is going to take this time interval and multiply it by 60. Uh, that's because there's 60 seconds in a minute, and we're trying to figure out how many beats per minute are happening. So if we multiply this by 60, we get 97.5. Four. Now that's pretty close to what Reason said. You know, Reason said 99, ours thing said 97. Uh, and you gotta keep in mind, like, I'm clicking into Reason, so Reason's getting that beat right away. There's going to be a delay with me doing the stopwatch and everything, and also the stopwatch is only giving me the first two um, digits here in the decimal, uh, whereas obviously here, when we, you saw when we did the um, math, like, it's a long repeating thing, and it would be a long repeating thing uh, in the code, too. So, uh, basically, I, I think this formula is a, a nice starting off point, you know, taking the beats, dividing it by the time that the beats occurred, and then taking that and multiplying it by 60, you get your BPM. Not too shabby. Now, this leads to your other questions of how we're going to execute this concept. Uh, for me, as far as the input goes, I'm leaning more towards a piezo or cap touch. I really want to be able to really tap it in uh, to really, you know, feel the rhythm. As I said, for me, rhythm and tempo and stuff like that in music, it, it's all about feel. So to be able to actually input nicely like that, I think that'd be really cool. I have to say, though, of the two, I'm leaning most towards cap touch because I'm assuming at the end of this, there's probably going to be some kind of PCB, yeah? Uh, and I think with our bodgy PCB skills combined, we might actually send a design off to Fab that might work on the second time. Now the microcontroller, in terms of a collab between the two of us, that, that's an interesting discussion point because I think we approach the that from kind of two different uh, ways. Uh, for me, I tend towards a SAMD 21 or 51, or even recently the NRF 52840. I don't think that's necessary in this case. Um, cause, uh, and it's usually on a, an Adafruit dev board because I live comfortably in the world of Circuit Python now. Um, but I know that you are more into your you know, traditional Arduino based boards. You know, you're at Tiny, you're 328, you're 32U4. So, you know, I, I'm really fine with either way. Uh, I think I'll defer to you on that, uh, but also uh, we could maybe even meet in the middle um, and maybe do something that neither of us are too comfortable with, uh, but we've both dabbled with. We could maybe look into our friend Sion's tiny Pico board uh, and maybe use MicroPython with that. Um, I'd just throwing out some ideas, but yeah, I think I will defer to you. I'm really fine with either one, um, and uh, I think 
you know, I wouldn't mind maybe doing an Arduino product just because I haven't done one in so long. Um, so yeah, that, that's interesting. It's interesting. I'll also see your metronome and raise you that this project, I, I think the concept could really go way bigger than just a metronome. Um, first of all, I think in general, we've got to get some fun, funky sounds happening, whether it's some funky little blips with a 386, kind of like a Atari punk console kind of thing going on, or maybe we're, we're triggering waves or MP3s, uh, maybe the sounds are on SD card and we're using a breakout board, something like that to trigger that. But I think really where the, the real excitement of this project hangs out for me is the idea of what if you have multiple inputs to put in rhythms and you could stack these rhythms on top of each other. Maybe they build off of the metronome or maybe they're just living freely in space so that you basically have this drum machine kind of thing that isn't tied down to a four to the floor um, construct. Uh, it's almost kind of living as a loop pedal so you can have these different rhythms stacked on each other, triggering different sounds all maybe in this little box. I think that could be really fun and I'd love to see something like that where we're almost kind of building an analog electronic instrument. I, I think that I think that could be really cool. I, I yeah. Really, really cool. You could have different drum patch. Yeah, that's that would be awesome. And then I if we want to go deeper, and this might be too deep for right now, but I just want to throw it out there to let it buoy in the waves, if you will. Uh, Eurorack. Mm. Eurorack synth module. This this idea in a module where you can tap in these different rhythms, right? And then you can send it out as clock to other synths. So you're basically creating this like stacked rhythm module that, that can, uh, it may be too deep, but just, just this is where my brain's going. I don't know if your brain is on the same little path here, I, but I just, I just want to throw this out there. I, I think we got to start with the basics, which honestly the basics of all music is just the beats. Just that solid BPM. Yes. You gotta crawl before you can walk, before you can run, before you can sequence beats on a, a Euro rack. But I'm, I'm just saying, I think that could be really cool. I also think other people would be really into that as well. I think it could be helpful. I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think it has a lot of, a lot of potential here and I am, I am hyped. But now I, I throw the ball to your court uh, and I'll, I'll let you respond. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. And for those that have no idea what's been going on in this video, uh, David Watts has uh, asked to do a collaboration project with me that's music-based, beat-based. You probably picked that part up. Uh, and he made a video the other day uh, where he uh, was basically asking if I would collab um, because I am terrible at uh, responding on Discord. In general, I'm terrible at responding. It's actually a pain point in many of my uh, relationships and friendships where uh, you didn't text me back, Liz, and I'll be like, I, yeah, sorry. What can I say? I'm a dingus. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing a collab. If you haven't seen David's channel, uh, I'll link it down in the description. Um, I also put the video that he said he posted uh, down there too. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to see where this project goes. I mean, you know, I can't turn down a music project uh, And especially one that involves so much math, but that's gonna do it for this video If you like to toss me a thumbs up leave a questions or comments down below uh, I'll have links in the description. There are some similar projects out there uh, That are interesting. I think to, to reference here uh, Because never reinvent the wheel especially with math uh, but thank you for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.